Welcome to lesson two in this Autodesk Inventor beginner series. In this lesson, you will learn to draw a part that looks like this. Before we get into that, though, if you have not done lesson one and learned how to set up a project, or if you need help with that, go back to lesson one and get that project set up so that we have everything organized and then come back here and begin drawing this part with us. Uh, so let's wipe that out of the way. This is what you will see when you have Inventor open. If you have your beginner lessons project set up, it is here on this list. And now we're going to start a new part. Uh, this lesson, this series, for now we're going to use the standard inch parts. Um, here we have also millimeters and uh, other templates there for us. But we're going to stick with the standard inch IPT template. IPT is an inventor part. Uh, so click standard. You can double click that or just come down here and say create. Now we have a blank window where we can begin drawing our part. Inventor parts begin with sketches that we then turn into 3D models. Up here in the top left corner is the Start 2D Sketch button. Yes, there is a 3D sketch. I will not use that right now. So we're going to start a 2D sketch. Uh, sketches have to be created on either a flat surface of a part or on a flat plane. Notice when we clicked on Sketch, these three planes popped up. These are the origin planes. That is the XY plane, that is the YZ plane, and that is the XZ plane. Let's start with the XY plane. Just click on that. It will orient to face the front and give us an origin point to start with. We're going to start this part just by using the rectangle tool up here. In this case, we'll use the two-point rectangle. Click on the rectangle command. It goes to two-point rectangle. And that means we need to define two points to draw this rectangle. We'll put the first one right here on the origin. Notice it sticks. Once we get real close, it sticks to the origin. Click one time there. Note when I say click, usually talking about a left click. So we left click the origin, drag the mouse down and to the right, and click out there in the open space. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom around a little bit to position that rectangle where we want it. Now right click and say OK. That says we are done drawing that rectangle. Now come up here to the top in the Constrain section. Uh, we will dig into all of these little symbols and what they mean later on. But for now we're going to put a dimension on this rectangle. Click on Dimension. Click the left side of the rectangle. And as you drag your mouse out to the left, it begins to create a dimension. So Drag it out to the left. Click out there somewhere and put in three. This rectangle will have a height of three inches. Now notice it dropped off the bottom of the screen. Again, we can use the mouse wheel to position it so we can see everything. Now I want to dimension the width of the rectangle. So we come up here and click the top line. It was just on 1.012, which is where we landed. Uh, but we come in here, just type the number four and give this a width of four. Click finish to finish that sketch. Notice it goes back to the view that we had previously, but we can see our three inch by four inch rectangle. So now that we have this little wireframe, this 2D sketch, we want to turn it into solid geometry. And that's where this create section comes in. We start here with sketch. Now we can move over to create. First thing we're going to use is extrude. Extrude takes a sketch and turns it into a solid model. So we click extrude. We just have that one closed profile so it automatically selects it for us. And I'm going to put in a distance of 0.25. Make this sort of a, a flat plate. Three inches tall, four inches wide, quarter inch thick. Say OK. Now notice how we are sitting here viewing this sort of isometric view of this part, we might want to spin around and look at it from a different side. And there's a few ways we can do that uh, that we will use throughout these lessons. Uh, notice over here is the Free Orbit button. When I click Free Orbit and have that selected, then we can come back over here in the middle of the screen 
click on this part and rotate it around. Notice while we move this part around that this little cube up in the corner is moving with us. That is the view cube. I can come up here too and click and drag on that cube and adjust my position a little bit as well. Notice how it's labeled also. It has the top. Click on top. We orient to the top. Notice now all that disappeared, but I click that arrow on the front. Now we're looking at the front. Go over to the right side. Now we're looking at the right side, and I can keep clicking this. Move all the way around. I can use a corner to get an isometric view. I can use the edge. Go to another corner. Keep rotating that apart around to any orientation that I want using that view cube. Uh, for most part, while we're working, I will probably use another command, which is F4. Uh, if you hold down F4 on your keyboard, then that free orbit circle pops up. You are free to rotate. And then when you let go, uh, you're free to start selecting. Uh, but let's go back to position it, look at the view cube again. We have the front, the right, and the top. That is what is known as the home view. See this little house icon up here above it? Now let's rotate off into a different position. We'll zoom out. Maybe you zoomed out so far your part got lost. You just come back up here to this view cube. Click on home. It will zoom you back in. That's top, front, and right oriented and ready for you. Now let's start modifying this part with another sketch and we'll add some features to it. Click on the front face, notice it highlights. Click on it and it changes the appearance again. Come up here to the top and click Start 2D Sketch. Yes, there is a 3D sketch and we'll get to that uh, later on sometime, but for now let's go with a 2D sketch. That creates a 2D sketch on the front face of this part. Let's zoom out and back in a little bit so that we can see what we're working on. This time I want to draw a circle. Use the circle tool up here. Notice the two points that it gives us. We need a center point and then we draw out and create a point at the edge and that's why this is called a center point circle. So with that selected we bring our mouse over to the middle of our part. Click about in the middle and drag out to the right. Now notice as we begin drawing this part, we see a dimension come up. As we move the mouse around, it changes that diameter. At this point, I can come in, type in the diameter that I want for this circle. Now if I had not done that, let's just delete that dimension. If I had not done that, I still have a circle that can be freely resized when I click on it. That's where we would just use the dimension tool up here. Click on the edge of that circle, create that diameter again at 1.5. Same dimension, same thing, either way we go about it. Uh, now I can click the center point. Oh, notice what happened there. It's coming back to edit dimension. If I'm still in dimension mode and dimension is still highlighted, I need to right click out here and say OK. That gets me out of dimension mode. Now I can just click and select. If I click on the center point of that circle, I can still move it around. I click on the edge of the circle. I cannot resize it because the dimension is on there. So what I need to do now is dimension this circle into place. Notice down here in the bottom corner of the screen it says two dimensions needed. I can still move this circle until I put some more constraints, in this case dimensions, on this circle. Let's click on the dimension command again. Come over here to the left side of the circle. Notice it wants to put a dimension on that edge, but we're not worried about that right now. We just come over here, click on the center point of the circle, drag that up to the top, click again to place that dimension, Let's give it a dimension of 2 inches. That puts us 2 inches off the edge of the circle. And knowing that this block was three in or 4 inches wide, uh, that puts us centered top to bottom. I'm going to right click and say OK just so I can select again and show you what has happened. We can move this circle up and down. Down here in the bottom corner it still says 1 dimension needed. That is where we use dimension again. Click the top line, click the center point of the circle, drag out to the left, 
and we will do 1.5 inches to put it centered top to bottom in this three inch plate. Hit enter there. Again, click right click, say OK. I am out of dimension. Notice this has changed color. I cannot resize it. I cannot drag it. It is black. And notice it says down here in the corner that we are fully constrained. Finish sketch. We orient back to that home view. It defaults back to whatever view we were just in whenever you finish a sketch. It goes back to the view you were in before you created the sketch. Now we have though a 2D sketch on the face of this part. We're going to use extrude again in the first part of this where we created our extrusion over here in this list. Our first extrusion created a solid. That's what we have right here. That first output creates a solid. But what I want to do now is to cut a solid. I want to go through all. I could put in a dimension, but if I click through all, no matter what distance it needs to go, no matter how thick that part is, it will always cut through all. It changes the direction of this arrow down here, and I say OK, and I have a hole through the part. We will dig into all of the, all of the different features, all of the information that's in here. There's a lot of options. Again, that'll be another lesson. We'll get into all the details of that. But for now, we have a hole. Let's add a few more features around that hole that we just created. Uh, notice this one. We used a sketch. We drew a circle to create a hole. This could have been anything. This could have been a rectangle. This could have been a hexagon. It could have been a slot. We could have done lots of different shapes to create that hole through that part. Uh, finish sketch to go back here. But I want to do hole using... Where is it? The hole command. Click on the front face. I can right click and say new sketch. I can come up here and say new sketch. Same thing either way. I'll zoom back to where we can see everything. And then we're going to use the point command right here. We create a point that we will then use to locate our holes. Click four places. Doesn't matter exactly where they are for right now. We have four points. Now notice, again, they're all free to move. And it says here we have eight dimensions that are needed. Click on the circle, click on the point. It's going to give us a dimension, center to center. Let's make this. Oh, look what I did. I accidentally put in 10 inches. If I need to change that, I just come back up here and click on it. 1 inch, that's not what I want, 1.5. 1.5 inches that way, circle to point, 1.5. Do this a little different, I can click the diameter of the circle, and it pulls up that diameter that already exists, but I click on the point now, and it gives me that dimension that I want. Circle to point, 1.5. Now I want to create the vertical dimension. When I click on the circle and the point, I drag down, I get the horizontal dimension, move out to the left, I get the vertical dimension. It's just a matter of where you move the mouse after you click is where the dimension is going to go. Let's make this one, make this a one. Notice I've got two dimensions needed. Add another dimension that is a one. One dimension needed, another one at one inch, and we are fully constrained. In practice, I would probably never do this this way. Uh, there are other things we can do. That's what these constraint buttons up here do. Uh, there's better ways, honestly, to get these points positioned around this center circle. Uh, but we're going to keep this simple for now and just stick with using the dimension command. Yes, we put eight dimensions on there and we could have gotten away with a lot less using some of these other features, but for now, stick with uh, with putting the dimensions on there. Click finish to finish our sketch. Now instead of using an extrude and cutting a hole based on a circle, I'm going to come over here to the modify section and create a hole. 
Since I just have one sketch that is not being used, that sketch has points on it. Hole will automatically select all of those points to create holes through the part. This first option here under the type of hole, we just want a simple hole. There's other things we can do. We can do tapped holes. We'll use some of those. That's uh, tapered threads for pipe. But let's stick with a simple tapped hole for now. Termination, do I want to go a certain depth or I want to go through all? In this case, I want them all the way through the part. And then I come down here. Let's make this a 3 8 inch hole, 0 0.375. Hit enter or we click OK. And that gives us our holes through the part. I'm going to hold down F4, orbit a little bit. And I can see that I have all of those features all the way through the part. Now let's do a couple more things to this, just to, uh, to maybe dress up this part a little bit and see some of the other features. Up here next to hole is the fillet command, a fillet, a rounded edge, a corner radius. So click on fillet, this little window pops up, I can define the dimension of that fillet, I want to give it a 0.25 quarter inch radius. Then we bring the mouse over and as you get close to the part, it will highlight edges. I want to make these four corners have a quarter inch radius. Now if you accidentally click something you didn't mean to, just hold down control and click it again, and that goes away. Selected the four edges that I want, say OK. There we have our corner radius, or fillet, on all four corners. Uh, next thing, let's go up here to chamfer. A chamfer is a beveled edge, defaults to a little 45 degree cut. We give it a distance. Let's make it something small. I don't need anything huge. Let's put 20 thousandths in there. Let's go to the back edge, the front edge. Let's get front and back edges of all of these holes. See how I can't see that line directly. I could come down here and click on it. But it can see through the part and knows there's an edge back there. It makes it easy to select. Now we have all of the edges that I want. Let's use F4 again to orbit around. You can look and see that every edge has been selected. We say OK. That's the part. We created a plate. We put a hole through the center. We put four holes in it, added fillets at the corners, and then chamfered all of those edges. That is lesson two. We are done for now. So let's come up here, click on the little floppy disk icon, save and if we are in our beginner lessons folder we can give it a name lesson two and click save that part is saved we're done for now uh, feel free to go practice these things uh, draw a part draw a new part draw rectangles draw different sizes different dimensions put your holes in different places uh, practice these things and then come back and we will do lesson three and learn some new skills